I give you my heart But the very next day You give it away This year To save me from tears I'll give it to someone special Hello everyone! My name is Anastasia and uh, for the first time in many many videos I want to do a proper introduction. <laughs> so I'm Anastasia, I'm a Russian cross teacher uh, but for the last uh, almost five years I live in China and I pick up cross stitch as a, like a, a full-time hobby not so long ago, around three years ago. So. I still consider myself a newbie teacher, <laughs> so most of the things I do are in no way uh, like professional or experienced. Uh, most of the things I just um, much budge the way I see them. <laughs> so this is the channel where I want to share my exciting journey of a cross teacher. Also, sometimes I do some oil paintings or uh, random Lego. <laughs> And of course, I would like to share some life update with you because I the last two videos I've done in a type of vlog and I noticed that I don't talk about a lot of personal stuff that's happening to me, um, just basically what I stitch during the week. And that is fun and nice and I love making videos like that. But for the last video of this year, and you have heard it right, if this is the last video of 2020 that I decided to just uh, have a nice company with you and so I wanted to share with you what happened with me for the last two weeks and uh, just m make a little personal life update. The work has been so busy and chaotic that I have such a little time to stitch left that um, I was just squeezing in <laughs> as many stitches as I can is in this last as less possible time as I could. Uh, but anyway, I have two cross stitch finishes to share and some more finishes, but not cross stitch. And I will show them to you as well. So let's start with just personal life. And that would be uh, on the 14th of December, I finally legalized my divorce. So uh, last month I told, uh, my in, on my Instagram that I applied for divorce and on 14th of December finally I went to the Russian embassy and they gave me a certificate of divorce so yay this chapter of my life is finally over for those of you who haven't been with me through my summer videos or who doesn't know I've um, I've been married for the last three years and then but I've been with this guy for a lot more. We've been dating for 12 years, I think. <laughs> so um, it's, it's, uh, it's not that sad and there was no drama involved, nothing bad happened. Just for at some point in our life, we understood that we don't love each other anymore. We are still best friends and of course, uh, he's a very... I respect him and I love him, but not in a romantic kind of way. So after a nice talk, we decided to separate and uh, it happened in the beginning of summer. <laughs> so I had whole summer and autumn to go through it and uh, um, I'm already over all the drama. <laughs> I'm already over all the sad feelings I ever had about it. So now it's time to congratulate me <laughs> on the final chapter and uh, why we it took us seven months approximately seven months to get the paper done is that it's so expensive to get divorced in china i never knew but not like generally in china but in the russian embassy in china <laughs> if you go divorce in russia you still have to pay the fee but it's not as much as here here we had to pay four thousand yuan which is six hundred dollars just for the paper that it's like too much <laughs> uh, so that's why we were harboring um uh, like a desire <laughs> like a hope that we will be able to go back home to russia that the borders will be finally open and we will be able to divorce in russia but since life didn't happen this way we had to do it here 
and before the end of the year, yeah, that's that's the chapter of my life is finished and I'm pretty happy that we did it before the end of the year. Like I wanted just to be in 2020 and it's done. So another um, thing this is which is happening in this December is that at work we are having a online virtual concert. Like every uh, every year after the new year, maybe on the third or the fourth, we will have a big concert with all the kids dressed up in their tiny uh, costumes and we will sing songs with them. And it's just generally a very wonderful occasion where like uh, all the parents will be able to attend and they will see like uh, all the teachers and uh, we will see each other because <laughs> uh, we, can't, we don't really meet that much among the other teachers of all the kindergartens. I think there are like at least 16 branches right now in Beijing and a couple in Shanghai. So of course it's a big event for everyone. But this time since... Uh, um, everyone is still afraid about the pandemic and no one wants to have a big gathering together like that because 16 schools together that's a lot so they decided to make turn it into online version which will be made by the end of the december so we need to rehearse with the kids a lot of songs so we will need to film a very nice video <laughs> And I would love to be the one holding the phone and filming it because I think it, I, I will do it better. But unfortunately, I will be the one sitting there and trying to calm the kids down <laughs> and singing songs with them. And so, uh, but uh, actually, I'm kind of relieved that this, we, uh, this year it's only virtual. So we won't be needing to uh, attend to a concert in January because I think the first week of January, right after the new year, I will be going back to Bingzhou. And uh, Bingzhou is just a little provincial um, city. Not, it's, it's kind of far from Beijing, but uh, in general map of China, it's uh, not far. It's seven hours away from Beijing on uh, the bus or the train. And uh, um, my visa story isn't over yet. I've already complained a lot about my visa during my summer videos that um, since this year is complicated in itself, it's also difficult to renew the visa and it's also difficult to apply to a new work visa. And uh, since the last HR of my previous workplace screwed up so hard that I cannot get a new work visa in Beijing, maybe this year, definitely. I will see what I can do next year. So that's why I have to go to another province to apply to a work visa there. That's why <laughs> uh, I will have to go back for at least one week out of Beijing. I th suppose it will be a heavy stitchy week because I have nothing else to do than just sit every day there and uh, apply for my work visa. But that would be it. So it's not like I'm looking forward to it that much, but after such a busy month, I was like, Maybe it's not that bad. Yeah, it's like far away. Uh, the city is very small and it's very... Um, the economics of the city was very uh, much touched by the economic crisis that happened because of the virus. So lots of the places in the city are closed. Like the majority of the places in the city are closed. Um, nothing really to see there. So it's just a very small place. Nothing really to do. And I'm not even sure that I will be able to find uh, some hotel or place to stay because last time I was there they uh, provided an apartment for me to stay which was so run down <laughs> that I couldn't even take a shower for one week that was like so dirty and the windows couldn't close. So no way I'm going to stay in that apartment this time in the middle of the winter. I would freeze to death <laughs> with non-closing windows. But anyway, that's why I have very mixed feelings about this trip in the beginning of the January. Like maybe I will have some days off work and I don't need to be surrounded by kids that much and I will 
really have some free time to stitch more but at the same time like I will not see my friends there won't be any like working Wi-Fi <laughs> and I have no idea about my living situation there and uh, eating whole week from whatever you can find in a convenience shop is also like mm, so so experience you know like uh, I prefer cooking for myself or at least ordering food and in that place it's like Okay, let's not talk about the bad things which are awaiting for me in January. Let's talk about merry things. So what's happened these two weeks? And first of all, we attended to another oil painting session. on my face and I want you to see the Audrey Hepburn. Um, yeah, it, she doesn't look like Audrey Hepburn that much, just a, like lady. Uh, but my code name for her is a lady with a chicken hand. Like, don't tell me you don't see fried chicken in this hand. Uh, that's just so cool. So, um, no, we didn't specially went there to paint this picture. Uh, my boyfriend's uncle wanted to try oil painting and since we already went there before so he uh, asked us to accompany him and uh, um, try so he could try mixing the colors and working with brushes and oil so this was the result which was not very bad in general like I like the picture yes Madrid Harbin is a little more fat than she should be originally but that she just likes uh, fried chicken a lot. This version of her, her likes fried chicken a lot. Uh, so, and my another finish that I had during the past two weeks was Little Hogwarts. Um, this is a freebie by Yekaterina Velika. She's a Russian designer. And uh, so you can go to her at, uh, Instagram page and grab the design and it's worth it so much just can you not see this hogwarts and the antlers and the moon and the sky i think my favorite portion is the moon uh like the down there moon and the sky like these clouds are amazing i think my favorite part of the design are the clouds because can't you just they are like real like real 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 and the hogwarts itself is very cool so what I did is it requires the pattern requires 36 French knots. I did not want to do the French knots, so I did little white beads. Um, no idea where they came from. I think they were a part of some design I stitched earlier or just leftovers uh, from something I did in <laughs> during my lifetime. <laughs> So I found them in my suitcase and I used them and I almost had like literally just enough for this design. So I'm so happy with it. It's still not half a fold, but I was originally planning to turn this into uh, like um, ornament for the Christmas tree, but it's big. Um, just judging like by the de by the size of the design it's really big so i'm thinking about just making a wall hanging with it but also in a circular shape before the end of the year i'm not really planning to stitch that much but i have at least uh, five six ornaments that i want to turn like effable into the ornament <laughs> so this will be one of them and uh, um Let's see how it goes, I guess. And one more thing that I finished 
before I will show you the biggest cross stitch finish that I have during this past two weeks and which is I'm like so excited about. I finished the Lego Spider-Man, which I was doing for months now. I think that um, uh, I started uh, it in August, I guess, because uh, this was a gift to my boyfriend from me uh, on some kind of uh, Chinese Valentine's Day, which happens like four times a year. Yeah, I think like Chinese Valentine's days are more frequent that we usually have just once in February. So uh, it was a Valentine's Day. I gave him a Lego Spider-Man, but he told me it's like had too small details for him to put it together. So I was helping him to do it. And it took me like so long. The whole Spider-Man thing had 41 layer. And I don't mean like 41 layer of um, Lego blocks, 40, uh, 41 um, steps to make the Spider-Man, but every step had at least like six or seven layers of um, uh, Lego. This is what I mean. So the, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it immensely, like putting things together like puzzles or Lego is really my thing. I love it, but the worst thing happened at the end when I had like uh, these two columns of uh, uh, see-through uh, Legos, which will be like the um, base for his legs and the hand on the uh, spider web. And I had to put the whole Spider-Man with these three sticking out, protruding things together. So every time I would uh, put it together from one side, another will break, or the upper hand will fall down, or his head will break. I, uh, by the end, I was like, oh my God, just goddamn put together. <laughs> just stay together, please, stay together, don't fall. So I was fighting with it so hard <laughs> and uh, yeah, like when the whole hand breaks, you can roughly like assemble it back together. Like you can see like, oh, that's like the hole. You can like maybe put together. Yeah, that goes back together. Okay, you can put it. But when there are like separate small details fall off, I'm like, where I'm gonna put it now? Because I'm not going through all of the steps again to just check if one little detail fall out of where. But finally, I was, it was finished, it was done, it didn't miss even one detail, I put everything back together and I was so excited to see it. So now it's the thing that is untouchable. <laughs> we have the person who can't be spoken about, now we have a Spider-Man who cannot be touched and even looked at. excited about it. Uh, usually the winter is not my most active time, like usually in winter I prefer to cuddle in bed with some hot cocoa, read books and like maybe stitch a little but mostly like don't leave my house. But this winter I think because uh, the weather wasn't that bad and because the uh, just everything has still getting on happening in life that uh, I haven't spent that much time at home like cuddling and uh, uh, with my bed and uh, uh, drinking cocos. I've spent a lot of time like we went painting, we went uh, like this Friday we went to a uh, uh, charity stand-up concert. Uh, it was so cool like uh, for Be uh, there are many foreigners in Beijing of course there are m less than it used to be but still a lot so they organized a stand-up uh, comedy show for charity to raise money for like children and that was amazing because during the course of it you could also like uh, uh, go and buy actual presents for the kids you could bring the toys for the kids if you had any and you could also uh, like they had a list of um, 
uh, wishes that the Chinese kids had. Um, and you can actually go and buy something like from that list. So I think we raised like 5,000 yuan uh, for the cause and that's just like amazing evening. And this whole long story was about how on my way to charity evening, I have finally finished the biggest project of this winter. Like the thing that I have been stitching almost whole this year, I started it in February. Uh, 2020 uh, in Thailand because uh, uh, we were hiding in Thailand in <laughs> February trying to get away from the virus in China and uh, we came back in March and in Thailand I didn't have enough stitching with me like oh, we didn't do anything there we were saving money and just uh, staying in a hotel and uh, uh, on the beach most of the time uh, so that's why I mostly stitched everything I got. Like, I was assuming we went there for a week, 10 days. We stayed there a month. So, of course, I ran out of any cross stitch. That's why when we were in Bangkok, I accidentally ran into a cross stitch shop. And, of course, I just had to buy something. I had to buy something and start it right away. And the thing that I chose was uh, Winter Ship by the artwork of John Clayton. And usually it's not my style of things. I prefer more blended things. I prefer more backstage and uh, generally more bright and uh, smiley designs, but this is what it is. I finished it and I am so excited. I'm in love. Like the further away you look at it, the better it looks, but I will just put it closer so you can see. Oh. So let's just talk a little bit about the design itself. Like, look at the clouds. They were the most monotonous work I've ever done. They were just big chunks of uh, gray and beige colors. Not much variety. So it was like, okay, I will do this part and in the process I might fall asleep. But when you look at it from afar, they're like, oh my God, what is this fluffy awesomeness? <laughs> you like, you can see this uh, clouds. And can we just talk a little bit about the fans? Like it was done mainly in petite stitches, but from afar, it looks amazing. Actually, you can see the shade that it gets on the snow like this darker purple. At first, when I started like stitching purple next to the white snow, like whites here and here are all stitched. But when I started uh, stitching the dark purple, I was like, what the, why is there like such a dark purple? But now when I look at it, I see that it's like shade that's falling on the snow. Just the detail that the designer could put in this uh, project with such a little effort is like amazing. Yes, there are um, like several hundred of petite stitches, especially like in shape and in houses and in the fans, but the majority of the design is just cross stitch, just full crosses. Uh, I think there are some blends, but not that like much. So, and the back stitch is just like, a little on the tree, the tiny grass here, and that tree. That's it. So, oh my god, yeah. If Russian designers would actually learn how to do the same detailization in just like stitches without so much amount of, cro of uh, uh, three quarters and uh, uh, bl uh, blends and um, backstitch, we will win the cross stitch world. <laughs> I'm just kidding. But this is like the project that I love, 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 love. And it is so not my style. Like if anyone knows me, I'm more into cartoonish. I'm more into bright colors. It should be like the colors you will, that will burn your eyesight. But this is so quiet and nice and just give me um, calmness in my soul. So every time I touched it, I was like, yeah, the goodness in this world exists. I don't know why, but 
it just gave me this vibes you know so next year i already ordered some more of john clayton works actually um ordering things being in china is difficult <laughs> so i ordered things so my mom in russia will receive them and uh, then she will try to send them to me by just usual mail which will be much cheaper i'm not sure if i will receive them but i will try <laughs> and uh, one more thing like anyone remembers that maybe in the end of august i said that i was ordering some mail hill to try bidding like um real bidding uh it still didn't come august september october november december five months still not come so this is how actually it's difficult to get anything <laughs> oh, cross stitch uh, wise uh, being in china i'm not talking about like a uh, floss and uh, fabrics and stuff like that that's kind of easy you can just order it uh, on taobao but if i want some kits from like um or samplers uh like uh, from europe or america ugh. I should better forget about it. So that's why it explains why I stitch so many Russian designers because that's kind of easy for me just to order and kit up myself. And uh, no idea if I will ever in my life be able to try hand dyed floss unless I will dry it myself. <laughs> so, okay, <laughs> no, let's not focus on bad things, but let's just admire one more time the finish yay so so far in december this is my third finish i did i finished it this friday oh by the way uh -uh. always forget about it today's sunday today's sunday 20th december like doesn't even even need it i don't know like i see everyone announcing the day and time and like it's noon yeah so if anyone like taking down notes it's sunday Ah, so yay! I just got, I just got. Ah, it's, it's amazing. So my plans for it is to put it onto a circular frame, put it on my wall. No idea when I will be able to do it because I need to measure and frame it. And actually I need to FFO some other stuff. So maybe it will be the framing job for 2021 because uh, at the end of December is already gonna be so much chaotic. Um, as I said, this is the last proper floss tube of the year. So I'm so glad that I have like two finishes to show you and so much to share with you. Let's give a second and talk about the best new thing of the week. Because I'm filming once in two weeks, I think I could do two best new things. So the first is uh, not a thing, but a person. Stitchman Darcy on Floss Tube. If you haven't seen him, go and watch him. He's so hilarious. It's like a real man just cross stitching huge projects and just talking about it is so hilarious. Like, and he even like drinking beer all the time. Like, what would be like more manly than you cross stitch and drink beer? <laughs> like um i have no idea but it just makes me smile all the time and most of the things he's doing are really beautiful like not most like all of the things he's doing are really beautiful and his projects are gigantic so but yeah go watch him like he only has two videos on this channel i'm waiting for the third one like I already checked his uh, channel maybe three times this week, so like looking forward to the third video. Where is it? We are waiting! And the second best thing for this week was that we went to the Foreigner Fair in Beijing. It's like a type of uh, market fair for before Christmas, organized by foreigners and mostly for foreigners because uh, I saw a lot of Chinese people there, but uh, it was a small... Uh, gathering together and uh, most of the uh, things that they offer are either handmade or they are uh, souvenir 
quality made, I would say. Like, they are nicely made. The quality is the best. The uh, price is also very high, but it's not like something you could use on a daily basis. Like, I have seen the uh, maps, uh, the puzzles of uh, huge maps of China or uh, like very fancy handmade soap. And what I bought for myself, like I promised to show it on Instagram and I totally forgot and then I left it here. So I bought myself a tea set. So it's a Tea Journeys company and they have a big variety of tea sets. So uh, they can either sell them like in a boxes like this where you have, they look like candy, don't they? I already freaked out. Ah, sorry about that. So they're not candy, they're little teas. So what I have here, I have coffee white tea, dark chocolate white tea, dark chocolate mint white tea, vanilla and mandarin white tea, vanilla and coconut white tea, and lychee. I don't know why I said white tea all the time. So, and they give you like a, a little history about all the teas and uh, where they've been in, uh, like inspired by what. I uh, see they like were inspired a lot by Chinese tea, uh, teas and uh, Papua New Guinea's teas and Ecuadorian teas, so, and Yunnan coffee. So it's like, uh, they, um, I think they're like a small local business and uh, uh, traveling abroad and trying things like that. Oh, it, it's really what um, inspires me on my CrossFit journey, just looking at other people who have almost the same life as me as a traveler, but at the same time, they combine their um, enterprise and their hobbies together. It's like uh, they like tea, they make tea, so they would imply the taste of all the places they've been to in their teas. And if you're interested in, I think they have a website, like www.tea-journeys.com. If you would like to try it, <laughs> it's amazing. I already tried dark chocolate white tea. Mm. That's my tea of this weekend and it was amazing. It's generally just a white tea, but the leftover in your mouth you have, like the taste, aftertaste in your mouth, leftover, oh god. The aftertaste of your mouth that is like really, really creamy chocolate. So that's amazing. So it's time to do some whips. And this week I have been focusing solely on this Chinese dragon. Um, I have been doing it mostly during the lunchtime at work. So that's why it's not finished yet, but it's growing nicely. So last time I did a video, I was not sure if it will fit on this fabric, but then I measured it and I will have very little, um, fabric left, but anyway, why not, right? It's gonna be just a um, Christmas ball. So this is a Chinese dragon surrounded by the uh, Chinese lanterns. It needs a, um, a shade of peach and a blend of peach and yellow. So there is yellow in his belly and a little bit of yellow and peach in the lanterns and it will be done. And then I will need to put in a lot of backstitch and I'm pretty sure I can finish him off. And then my big plan is to FFO, FFO all of my stitched um, uh, ornaments so far, which would be four by Makaronka Stitch, uh, the dragon by Antonina Tritikova. Oh, it looks so cute from afar. I love his horns little horns and uh, uh, Hogwarts uh, so I even bought like the sticky spray for that I just like uh, put in Taobao the sticky spray for fabric this is what it gave me so I'm gonna try uh, because I watched some of the tutorials on how to FFO things and uh, some of the uh, sorry, I have no idea whom I watched because they were several, <laughs> uh, more than five, <laughs> and uh, it was like 
weeks ago. So they all um, tell, said that it's better if you have some not very sticky spray to mount your crossage on and um, and then you can adjust it and move it and uh, it will be just generally easier than just to pin it uh, because when you pin it you you can you don't really you, you need to be a very good at that to do a very nice tension but when you just like glue it you can just fast adjust it <laughs> adjust it very fast <laughs> so yeah that's what i'm doing and uh, for my plans is to finish the dragon which would be the fourth finish in december who am i and what i'm doing here and of course mm, to finish the jacket for my boyfriend can i really do this like what do you think because so far i have been doing uh, 1200 stitches per week but I'm really struggling with it. I'm really struggling with it because the more I stitch it, the heavier the jacket will get. Like, I'm not sure it's really so true. Like, this is what it looks like right now. Yeah. So colorful, right? So it's a horse dream catcher by Natalia Arekhova or Elka Stitch. Um, let me do it like this. So the horse has horns and a little paw, and there are some wings um, down below under its mane. So I think what I was working on uh, for the last two weeks are these wings, the paw. I also filled in some of the badge in the hair and I finished the browns, like the browns here, or the black and the poor. So I worked a lot, like I did 2500 stitches for two weeks, but because I'm like taking a color and filling it all the way, taking color and filling it again all the way, it's not that visible, like it's not like I will just take this part and fill it in, no. I will like fill in all the grays and all the badge in the whole, mm, picture and you can see the like little little pieces of it so and it's getting heavier and heavier by day <laughs> uh, it will look great I mean it's too bright right to like oh yeah here it will look great it will look stunning but my main goal is to finish it before New Year. Because uh, in Russia, actually, we don't celebrate Christmas that much. But New Year is like our Christmas. We don't go to bed the whole night. We have Father Frost, who will give us the presents during the Christmas night. We have like Christmas tree, like fur, uh, New Year tree, that we call it. And uh, like the whole family big dinner, it's a big family pro uh, holiday for us. And after that, we'll have like 10 days uh, of uh, vacation of work. So uh, we are not doing a Christmas present exchange with a boyfriend, but we are doing a New Year Christmas exchange. Uh, yeah, I said everything correctly. New Year present exchange. Uh, and what I'm getting is uh, something that will help me sew faster. So yeah, I will be getting a sewing machine. I'm so excited. I know he already bought it and uh, I haven't seen it yet, but he just asked my opinion on which one is better. So that's why I know which I, what I will be getting. And it makes me really excited because I am dying to try to sew on a professional level. I mean, not like I do with uh, um, hand sewing, but like uh, try some quilting techniques and uh, try sewing some table mats and uh, pillow w pillowcases with my cross stitch pieces. I mean, it will give me so much more freedom for FFOing things that I have right now. <laughs> so. And it will make things much faster. I wouldn't need to do um, to buy a ready-made bag to mount the cross stitch on it. I will can make a bag by myself, and it will be sturdy, and it can uh, 
hold the weight even if I stitch it um, even if I make it <laughs> so that's why I'm so excited and that's why I really 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 want to finish the jacket yes he has seen the jacket it's not a surprise stitch so I'm not afraid to show it or talk about it and uh, it's just uh, I think the more he sees it the more he sees me working on it is that the more he really understands uh, how sometimes time consuming and difficult it is to be a cross stitcher to have a cross stitch as a hobby uh, because like when we just met and I showed him some of my pieces uh, he was like yeah you can sell that I'm like yeah sure like uh, but I'm not sure like uh, the people are ready to pay the full price for things I do and he's like why not? Like, um, make a pillow, sell it for 20 kwai, uh, 20 yuan. Um, so it's like um, six times less, um, not even ten dollars. I was like, uh, not sure that I first staged the whole piece for a month and then I made a pillow through we do for a couple of days from it and. Um, I'm ready to sell it for 20 yuan. It's like really four dollars, I think it's four dollars. So I'm like, that's like such an underestimation of my work. But now that more he looks at it, the more he sees that I'm working on it, it's like, oh yeah, like little pillow would go for 300 or 400. And then the like jacket, three, four thousand. I'm like, yeah, that would be probably more correct. Of course, he's still like, when I show him some handmade works of other people, he's not ready to pay the price and he thinks it's overpriced. And I think this is like one of the problems of uh, our modern days because everything is in um, such um, availability that everyone can get something for a very cheap price. So we start to think about handmade works as uh, a real cheap ones. And, uh, but actually like a lot of people make their works unique. And that's amazing. I don't consider myself in that echelon of people, but just thinking about them and like um, how much your work should cost on the market it's like definitely not 20 yuan for this big cross stitch piece so if i can finish it by the end of december can it be finish number five Ooh. <laughs> i'm kind of excited but lately when i've been stitching this i've been stitching the jacket every day at home and i've been stitching other things during my lunch time i was craving a new start just, just my soul wanted something new, and then I, uh, and then I watched uh, Crafty Gaming Jamie. If you had done to watch her, go and watch her. She's a really big inspiration for me. Like I'm not uh, gonna stitch the project she's actually stitching, but the way that she thinks about things and she. Um, just the way her head works is really inspirational for me because she is putting together a sampler of um, uh, all her favorite anime characters, like just a giant piece of cloth with different uh, patterns of anime characters. And they're not even all the same style. They're like from all different designers and all the different styles. And because I'm a big uh, anime person, cr uh, gaming person, and I love books. I could never like stitch something one thing and I was thinking, but then I like this too, and I like that, and I like this, oh, but it will like take me the whole life to stitch all the things. And then she did it on one big piece of uh, cloth, so I was like, what a if? Me too, I will find these little patterns of my favorite games. Not like I'm not doing anime, but my favorite uh, video games, computer games. And uh, I will also uh, arrange them like maybe in a big pattern and stitch them together. And maybe I can turn them into a pillow because it's not something I can do like even 
in a month or two it's like maybe a year-long project Ooh, year-long project this excites me so maybe i can make a year-long project from it and i can stitch like this small little different designs and have a gaming pillow by the end of next year what do you think i think it would be amazing so now i'm gonna look out for all the my favorite games and uh, i'm looking for gaming patterns uh, no idea right now what will be in this what will be not because um I don't want it to be only the biggest names, I want it to be some of the indie horror games that I played and uh, just small ones too. So probably I will have to either commission uh, uh, one of the patterns, like maybe pay some Russian designers to design something for me, or maybe I will have to do it myself. Not sure about that part, <laughs> but uh, so I'm excited to do that. But no way I'm starting it right now, but probably it will be the start new year start new year new start What you what are you doing for new year? Uh, I know a lot of people like uh, Doing no new starts in 2021. I'm doing all kinds of starts in 2021 But uh, if you're doing a new start should it be something big or special or just something you really want or Because so far I've been doing everything from the stash and my, since my my heart is craving a new start, I was thinking like, why not to start uh, the last start uh, from the stash in 2020? I'm not finishing it. Maybe just putting a couple of hundred of stitches in it. No idea what it's gonna be. I'm still in, uh, like uh, thinking about it because first I wanna finish my dragon, but it's happening. So stay tuned, I will show it to you. And one more thing I wanted to share is that be on the lookout for the finishing parade. Finishes parade. Parade of finishes. Whatever. Uh, so everything that I stitched in 2020. I know on my channel the first three videos are the parade of all the things I stitched between 2018 and 2019. Maybe first two months of 2020. So I'm doing a, uh, because a lot of people are doing whip parade and it's already started. I'm not sure I have like something to show for the whip parade. I'm majorly having like 10 whips right now. So I think you already saw most of them. <laughs> uh, you already saw all of them if you've seen my videos for any existing time, but I will be doing a finishes parade. Uh, since I'm having first, second and third free, so I think I will do it during that time and after the new year we will all see a video of how 2020 was for me in stitches. So I'm excited for that. I suppose that's it for today, so thank you everyone for watching, liking and subscribing to this channel and see you! Bye!